Welcome to Five Good Minutes. You're listening to today's inspirational message on the book of Galatians with Bryce Vaught. Well, today as we continue our way through Galatians chapter 3, I want to read verses 15 through 18. Again, just to read it, just in case you don't have your Bible in front of you so you can have the context. And it says this, Brothers and sisters, let me take an example from everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or add to a human covenant that has been duly established, so it is in this case. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people, but, and to your seed, meaning one person, who is Christ. What I mean is this. The law, introduced 430 years later, does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the promise. For if the inheritance depends on the law, then it no longer depends on the promise. But God in his grace gave it to Abraham through a promise. Now, as I read that, you probably picked up on a key word that was repeated a few times. And that word is promise. And really the point of uh, the passage that we just read, the point that Paul is trying to make is that God's promise to Abraham was put in place well before the Old uh, Old Testament law was put was established, and therefore the law cannot override or cancel what was previously promised to Abraham. Now, why is this important? It's because for many people in that day, obedience to the law had become the primary source of confidence for people's standing before God. Now, remember the context of the book of Galatians. Paul had established this church in Galatia, and after he left, these people who were often referred to as Judaizers had come into this community and had really deceived them into adopting uh, certain adherences to the Old Testament law as a way to continue pleasing God, as if their position before God was uh, reliant upon their obedience But that's not the promise that God gives to Abraham. And so now now we have to answer the question, what is the promise? And the promise that God gave to Abraham is that Abraham's descendant would become a great nation, and that nation would bless every other nation in creation. Now, again, Paul points out that it's not many descendants that will be blessed and bless everyone, but it's primarily one descendant that will be blessed and become a blessing for everyone. That descendant is Christ. The promise is that Christ is going to come and in him, global universal redemption will be experienced. Uh, The promise is that Christ and his kingdom will come and it will overwhelm all the world with God's goodness and God's life. And Jesus even emphasizes this. There's a passage in Luke chapter 13 where Jesus, uh, he says, the kingdom of God is like a tree. It's like a, a seed that's planted in the ground and becomes this great big tree where all kinds of birds come and make their nest in that tree. It's a picture of every nation being blessed by the kingdom that that starts small but expands throughout all the earth. We also see that every Christian view on eschatology or the end times ultimately culminates with a picture of Christ ruling and reigning on earth as he gives light and peace and prosperity to all the nations. We see that in Revelation chapter 21. And again, Paul's point here and our takeaway for today is this that our confidence in God to accomplish his promise of salvation, redemption, and blessing was never meant to be based on our adherence or obedience to the law. But our confidence is ultimately in God's faithfulness to fulfill his promise to us, that he will save us and bless us. We can be confident in God keeping his promise because he's been faithful to keep his promise to Noah and that he would never flood the earth again. He's been faithful to keep his promise to Abraham and making Abraham's descendants a great people. He's even kept his promise to Israel when he informed them that he would 
take them into exile when they disobeyed. He, he was faithful to fulfill that promise. And ultimately, he has been faithful to every promise he has made in the person of Christ. He has fulfilled his promises, and he is fulfilling his promises to bring blessing to the whole world. And that's what we rest our confidence on, not our obedience, not uh, how well we, we live up to God's standard, but our confidence is that God is faithful and he will ultimately bring to completion what he has promised to do. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us here today. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day. 